Hey, we're going to learn Ubuntu Server 1804 LTS. Now, I know it's been a little while since I made, another, made a video. Um, last was 1604. Uh, there have been a few releases since then, but those are not long-term releases. Um, this is the next long-term release. I'm a little late. I should have started this in April, but we're going to get going here. And I'm going to be doing this inside of VirtualBox. Um, you don't need to do this inside VirtualBox. This will transfer over to putting it on a bare bones computer or, you know, whatever you want to install it on. The, the installer is going to be exactly the same. Um, so let's get started. So here is the first screen that pops up. Once your USB device or CD is booted, um, this is what you're going to see. So we're going to select our language. Our preferred, so our preferred language is English, and this is our keyboard layout. Um, I'm just going to leave this as the default English US. And it's going to ask us, what do we, what do we want to do? Um, we just want to install Ubuntu. So here, uh, this is the network connections uh, dialog. What we are going to do here is, since this is going to be a server, we are going to change this from DHCP um, to static IP. We don't want the router or the DHCP server to give us an IP address. We want to set our own so we know what it is. And we can configure it in other things so we can um, send traffic to this server. So this is a little different. Uh, my IP address, my local IP addresses are different than what most people's are. Um, First, we select this. We select our Ethernet interface, and we click Edit IP version 4. And we change this from Automatic DHCP to Manual. And under Manual, the first thing it's going to do is ask you for a subnet. Um, our subnet, for me, is going to be 10.5.1.0 slash 24. That's the way it wants you to, it wants a sitter address, basically. So if this were, let's say your um, network is 192.168.1. whatever, it would be 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Um, this changes if you have more than one subnet. Uh, most of you probably do not have more than one subnet and don't need to worry about it, so you're just going to do slash 24. And this is going to be the address of the server. Well, I'm going to make mine 200. And my gateway is my router, which is 10.5.1.1. And my name servers, I'm going to set as Google's name servers just for the time being. 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. Those are Google's name servers. And search domains. I don't have a domain set up, so I'm just going to leave that blank. And then I'm going to hit save. And then we're going to hit done down here. So it's going to ask for a proxy address. Uh, we don't need to worry about this unless you have a proxy on your network. Then you do need to set this. But you probably do not have a proxy unless uh, you are in a certain environment. Um, more than likely, a unless you set up the proxy yourself or you are in a, let's say, a, a college environment. Or a in some college environments, they require a proxy. Um, in some business environments, they require a proxy um, to go through so they can monitor your traffic. Uh, so we don't need to worry about this. And our mirror address, that should be automatic. We just hit done. And it's going to ask us what we want to do. Well, in this case, I'm just going to use an entire disk uh, because I have a whole disk. If you are partitioning a disk and you are using only part of a disk, you can use manual and do it manually. But I'm using an entire disk because I just have an entire disk dedicated to the server. And it's going to ask me which disk I want to use. And here we have the VirtualBox hard disk. Um, in your case, it will show your hard disk. And it will automatically select and partition your mount points for you or create them for you. And we hit done again. And now it's going to ask you for your name. Um, this is a name I usually put admin local or wait sorry I put local administrator and the server's name um, that can be anything you want so in my case I'm just gonna make this 
learn Ubuntu. Um, a username is going to be local admin. Or sorry, I do this the other way around. Admin local. I do them backwards from the name. And a password, I'm just going to use the password test1234. Hopefully those are the same. I think I made a mistake. Try that again. So no identities. Um, you can import SSH identities so that you can log in automatically without a password. Uh, currently I do not have one of those. Um, I do not have a key from GitHub or Launchpad. So here's what it's gonna allow you to do. Um, these are popular snaps that you can install. Now snap is a new thing with Ubuntu 18. Um, in fact, I don't like it, to be honest with you. You can use it, but it doesn't, it, for me, it doesn't seem to have the same speed. Um, it definitely runs differently and it definitely just doesn't feel right. So what I usually do here is I skip this. I let this install. So this is going to finish installing now. This is this is like a really quick installation. Um, I'm going to be honest, this new installer, I don't like it very much. It's not very straightforward like the old installer was. Um, it just it gets to me a little bit. It's not as very it's not as fluid. I will say um, the old one was at least fluid, a fluid installation. You, going from one page to another, you kind of expected what to you knew what to expect on the next page. So here we are. That's the installation, and we're going to reboot the server. Hopefully, it doesn't boot from the disk. It's probably going to boot from the disk, isn't it? Remove installation medium. Yeah. So we gotta let me undo that for real quick. Um, do, 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 do. There we go. So then, when you restart your machine, you will see the same thing you're seeing here. Maybe in different resolution, because I tell you the resolution for VirtualBox is terrible. And there we are loading up. You can see everything zooming by. And now we are at the command prompt with some information. No authorized SSH key prints found for your user admin local. Well, that's okay because we're not trying to log in with SSH. And I really don't like the way that it puts these uh, messages out like this. In previous versions, it would append them to another another terminal, uh, tty2, 3456. Um, in this case, it seems to like to pin them right onto the front screen here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log in with our new user, admin local, with our password test1234. And we are logged in. We're going to clear the screen. Anytime you install Ubuntu or Ubuntu server, the first thing you want to do is update packages. Update any packages that already exist and that are installed. Um, so we are going to do sudo apt update. And what this is going to do, this is going to update our package lists. As you can see, it says that there are upgradable things. Um, it is updating the list to make sure that we are getting the latest packages. And upgrade. So sudo apt upgrade, and this will allow us to upgrade. Um, there's a bunch in here that need to be upgraded. So we're going to continue and let it do its thing. So Python and bash, grub. So basically, when you first install any Ubuntu system, whether it's server or desktop, the first thing you want to do is this. You want to run this update. It's very important. You will get the latest packages. You will get the latest everything. You could be using an older um, CD image, which may not have the newest packages on it. Um, it does not download updates while you're installing for the server version. It does for the desktop version, but it's still recommended to do this with the desktop version too. 
Now with Ubuntu Server 18, they have changed a few things. They have changed the network configuration um, to be a little more convoluted than it used to be. And it's, uh, it's rather annoying. Uh, it's a little harder and I don't like that either. Um, to be honest with you, Ubuntu 18 is kind of, is not, it's not hit me the right way and I'm kind of moving off of it and working on other things as well. But I still like the security. Um, for newer users, it's still a great thing. So this should be done here in just a moment, 81%. So what we want to do here is once we get this installed, the only other thing we're going to install is an SSH server. We're going to install OpenSSH so that we can boot up our computer, our server, and we can log into it from any desktop on the network. Um, even outside of the network, if we set up port forwarding with our router, we can go outside of our network and connect. But for right now, we're just going to worry about local networks. Ninety-nine percent. So now it's generating the image for Grub, and now we're done. So we can clear that out. So the next thing we're going to do is install the Open SSH server. Now, normally on Ubuntu sixteen, you could select that to be installed for you through different packages. But now that they've added the Snap Package Manager, which I don't use. Um, like I said, I don't like the way it works. It, it's very convenient, but it needs work. Um, it doesn't. It just doesn't work as fast as I think it should. Um, when, when I say as fast as I think it should, not as fast as installing, but as fast as once you run the app, it just isn't fast. It's much slower. You get a, You get a big. It's a big difference. So the first thing we're gonna do here. Well, the last thing we're going to do here is install the SSH server. So sudo apt install open SSH server, open SSH hyphen server. So this uh, is already installed. Okay, then I guess we don't have to worry about that. So now we're going to edit some, edit the information for, well, we're going to take a look at the config file for open SSH. We're going to make sure everything's good with it. sudo, I use nano, I don't like vim. Uh, it's annoying. It's uh, some things I like about it. It has some nice features, but it annoys me um, for the most part. Uh, sudo nano slash etsy slash ssh slash sshd dot config, I believe. sshd underscore config. There we go. So this here is our SSH configuration. So by default, all these commented uh, options here, these are all the default options. And you can change any of these that you'd like. Um, let's see. So we're gonna allow X11 forwarding, no banner, but you can add all kinds of things. I'll go more into detail with that, maybe in a future video about SSH specifically, about creating banners, um, changing different ports, changing addresses. If you have more than one uh, network interface, you can change the address and change the interface that you're listening on. So you can either listen externally or internally. A whole bunch of fun stuff. Um, host keys, um, that's another fun thing. You can log in to SSH without using a password if you have a RSA key. So for right now, you can just leave it default. You can close it by hitting Control X, and that'll exit there for you. Now we're gonna clear that again. So back here at a blank screen. So the last, the very, very last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install a firewall. Um, very important to have a firewall on your server, especially if you're going to put it behind a DMZ or open ports to it. Um, certain things, if you, if you put it out and you have it open to all, all the ports open to all traffic, people will try to, op to get into your ports. They will try to probe your ports and see what's on those ports and see what they can do with them. 
One of those is specifically SSH being on port 22. I leave it on port 22 for the most part until I open it up to the outside world. If I open up my SSH server to the outside world, I move it to port to a different port. Uh, definitely not 22. Sometimes 50722 or um, something higher. Uh, you don't need to be admin to run those ports, which is kind of tricky, but it changes a little bit of the uh, security. But anyway, we're going to install UFW for Ubuntu. So sudo apt install UFW. UFW stands for um, uncomplicated firewall. It's basically a wrapper. Oh, it's already installed. Um, I did not do this. This is automatic, apparently, in 1804. So UFW is um, uncomplicated firewall. It is a basically a wrapper for, um, I can't remember the name of it. I can't remember the name of the, uh, the other firewall. But anyway, we are going to en enable UFW because it is not enabled. So sudo u fw enable. So now you can see the firewall is active enabled on system startup. And we are going to allow port 22 through UFW. So sudo UFW allow 22 TCP slash TCP. This will allow port 22 to have TCP connections. And now you can specify this by IP address, by subnet. Um, you can specify this so that this is only allowed internally to certain machines. You can specify this. You can be sp so specific with this. You can specify one specific IP address to only allow that one. Anything else will not, uh, it will not allow anything else to connect to it. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to allow 22 TCP. So now that's all done. Don't even have to restart. That's the beauty of Ubuntu. No restart needed. So we are going to pretend like this is our machine that's running somewhere else. Um, we know that if we do if config, you can see here that our IP address is 10.5.1.200. See, I can't put my mouse over it because virtual box. I hate Windows. Anyway, so we're going to open up Putty. Let me get that window open for you. go now we are opening putty putty is fun so we're gonna this is me connected to 10.5.1.200 so we're gonna log in as admin local and our password test one two three four so there we are we're logged in and as you can see since we did the updates zero packages can be updated zero, zero updates are security updates so we've already got everything updated, one user logged in, uh, we have no system load, very low memory usage. So you can see all those things. So now we're logging in through uh, port 22. And as you can see, the firewall is working, it's showing us logged in. So when we, now we can do anything from this command line. So we can, um, I have config again, and as you can see, this is actually better looking than um, VirtualBox. This is the way we're going to be doing this from from starting on video two and onwards. We're going to be uh, using the PuTTY window, so you can actually read what I'm typing. Um, but as you can see, this is this is the base installation. This is all you need. This will get you up and running, and you'll have something to uh, work with from here. Uh, we'll be able to do. I'm going to skip over like last time I did DNS and DHCP or yeah, DNS and DHCP. I'm going to skip over those, I think, and I'm going to move right on to uh, Apache web server and uh, let's encrypt SSLs. Um, 
I've had a lot of requests for those. All right, so we'll see you in the next video.